Hello everyone and welcome back to a Gran Turismo video where we're looking at this week's time trial where you can earn 2 million credits. Yes you can. Here are the details and it's Catalonia No Chicane. Woohoo! It's a good one! We're in a Mercedes AMG GTR which you can see in the background. Sports medium tyres. I've put it at hard due to the oversteer. There's a lot of oversteer in this car. And a gold estimate around a 152.5. I do suspect we're going to get into the very low 149s with this challenge because there's just a lot of time to gain if you can work the car. If you do enjoy this video, do give it a like and do subscribe to the channel to stay in touch with all the latest content. As always, we are on this journey to 50,000 subscribers, so I do appreciate your support. Here we go then with the lap. You've got kilometers an hour, miles an hour there for you. You're going to have the splits down at the bottom. Let's head towards turn number one then. Now with this car, you carry a lot of speed. It does mean you have to brake earlier. So on the right hand side here, we're at the 200 board essentially, but on the right hand side, there's an orange painted barrier. You brake here. Now you will notice some of the top times are absolutely abusing gears. You can do that if you want to, but you don't necessarily have to here. You'll just brake earlier. If you do choose to abuse the edge of braking, you can brake a little bit later than that. But you notice here, I'm not really abusing it. As I come into here, I start to release the brake. I get a bit of oversteer. Lift off, I'm slightly going through this left-hander, and instantly, when you get on the power here, Every time your car's going to want to oversteer. So short shifting can help, but you lose time. In towards the long right we go then. And literally to start a curb here, just drop a gear and turn in. Let the car roll at this point, okay? You're going to use engine braking here, but not in an abusive way. You drop into third gear and letting the car roll. Look at that. Just letting it roll, 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 roll. And then I just started to accelerate now. I've also shifted to fourth gear. That's to stop the power oversteer, okay? So I'm using that orange painted barrier head. As it hits the center of my screen, that's when I'm going to start to accelerate. So... As it heads towards the center, I upshift and start to accelerate. Now I'm in fourth gear here. As I start to get into that higher rev range, the car will start to oversteer. This time I control it. If you do struggle with power oversteer there, short shift to fifth gear. It's a tiny bit slow by about a tenth, but it will save your lap. Now on the right side here for this right hander, we're braking this early. Yes, the last tree on the right before the bridge there, that is your brake marker. I'm using all the circuit here, as you can see on chase cam. And we're going to go hard on the brakes, dropping down to third gear here as we come into it. I've pointed towards the corner a little bit. I start to release the brakes and then I'll instantly want to get on the power. Again, short shifting, as I did right there, will stop any power oversteer. You do have to be careful power oversteer in this car. As we head down towards this left-hander, on the right side there, before the toilets that we normally use, there's a pole. It's multicolored. I've highlighted it there. It's hard to see in this video, potentially, but you will see it more, obviously. You can see it there on Chase Cam a bit better. But as that hits the edge of your screen, that's when you're going to hit the brakes. Now, I like to stay in third gear for this corner. Sometimes I'll drop to second if I overshoot it, but third gear just to keep the car bounced and I adjust the braking accordingly. I quickly try and get on the throttle there on the exit of the corner as we head towards this fast left. And we're braking this early here. So as the short circuit of Catalonia, the right inside curb of it ends. That is my brake mark. You see, I've just gone on the brakes right now. Now, I like to do this corner in third gear. I found fourth gear. You do lose a bit too much time. So I'm braking early in third gear here. I'll release, I'll let the car roll a little bit. Once it's straight, I then want to go full power. And that's what I do right there. And over towards the left-hand side then. And what we're looking for here is not the end of the curb, but the end of the red and white curb in, okay? Because obviously it narrows at the end. So the last red part of the curb this is your marker, as you can see here. I've just hit the brakes now. Now, you may want to drop to third gear. Third gear can help here. Or you can stay in fourth if you just like to let the car roll a little bit. It's your choice. I drop to third gear here. I'm trying to clip the inside curb, and then I accelerate through the corner. You can actually use a lot of the curb, more than usual, on the exit. So do use as much as you can there before you come back towards the right-hand side. Now, we've got this orange barrier here. The very end of it is a really good brake marker for the hairpin. Of course, if you are abusing the engine braking, you can brake later than this, but I'm not trying to abuse the engine braking here. So I'm literally using the orange painted barrier on the right-hand side there, the end of it, and I'm going to go hard on the brakes. Now, I would drop to second gear for this one, if I'm brutally honest with you, just to let it get the car in, and then short shift to third gear on the exit. You'll get too much power there instantly in second. We accelerate right through there. I short shift again because I'm going to go over that little bump there of the curb on the left. And literally the end of the curb on the left-hand side is a brake marker for this right-hander. You want to brake in a straight line, you just want to slow the car down here and you will let the car roll through this corner just because it's a long right-hander. And we do have an accelerating marker we can use here. So I'm letting the car roll a little bit here, letting the car roll. I'm trying to maintain a bit of speed. But as I approach the sausage and the orange painted barriers, you can use either of these, okay? As I start to approach these, I'm going to start going on the accelerator. You can see I've just gone on the accelerator right now. Now on the exit, I will suffer some power oster, so you may want to shift the fourth gear if you are struggling. I'm going to try and keep it in third just to maximize the power here. And I am short shifting the car. I haven't talked about that. 
but we'll talk about it shortly. On the left-hand side there, in the grandstands, you've got a group of people there. So lift and turn in there, if you can do that. You're aiming for the cones, which is why I've highlighted them. Aim for them. The car should understeer away from them, and you can actually abuse quite a lot of the track limits on the inside. So that's what I'm going to try and do here, as you can see there. Once I know I'll make the exit there, I short shift to fifth gear, just because I don't want the power oversteer. And I want to break in a straight line for this final corner. Okay, so you got the start of the yellow sausage. You could use that as a brake marker, but you actually want to break a little bit later than that. So you actually want to use the orange painted barrier on the right-hand side there. Just be a bit more aggressive. It'll just make the rear come out a little bit, but then you can get pointed for the final corner. As I go through here then, I'm waiting, waiting, waiting till the pit wall there. And the second the pit wall hits the edge of my screen is when I'm going to accelerate through the corner. And that's a 150.2. It was actually ranked one at the time, which was great. I'm going to take you into a pad lap. Now, I actually did a fair few laps on the pad because I was trying to get in the 50s. Uh, but then I was figured I was doing too much time. But on the pad, it's very much possible to get in the 50s. So again, hard on the brakes in towards turn one. I'm staying in third gear. Through the left I go. Now, because this car oversteers a lot, it's actually easier to control on the pad. As you can see there, I'm letting the car roll, roll, roll. Wait till the orange bat is in the center of my screen. Then I start accelerating. I'm just trying to control the car as I go through here. I am chasing my own ghost right now. Heading up here then, the last three on the right before the gantry, hard on the brakes and drop to third gear. Try and get the car turned in here and then start to accelerate. Just being careful that power oversteer. Short shift to fourth gear to really control it. As I continue on out of there, you can see the car is really wanting to oversteer on the pad. Hard on the brakes there with that pull on the right-hand side that I talked about as we go into this left-hander. Stay in third gear, accelerate out of the corner. If you do suffer a bit of power oversteer, by the way, just lift off a tiny bit down to about 70% throttle, then back to 100. The tires should grip here as we go hard on the brakes into this left-hander. You need to make sure the car goes straight here before you really put your foot down to avoid any issues with oversteer. Heading up towards this right-hander then, end of the red and white curbing at where the red is we turn into the corner fourth gear here through we go as we now continue on towards the hairpin remember we're looking for the orange painted barrier on the right hand side there it is hard on the brakes and down towards second gear to slow the car down and then we're going to short shift to third gear there we go happy days indeed get a bit of power obviously on exit even in third gear there we cut a lot of the left hander here and i stayed in third on the pad because it's easily controllable the oversteer or more easily controllable as we continue on through here then we're going to look for some people on the left hand side. Big group people lift off, turn in here. Look at the understeer we get there as we aim for the curves. We just missed them though. Sorry, the cones. Final corner then. The orange painted barrier on the right hand side. Turn in. Pit wall entry there. You accelerate through the corner. Happy days. We head towards the line. I really wanted a 50 here, but unfortunately it's a 51.045. 50s are possible though. Don't get me wrong. I just want to stay for hours on it. I'm using ABS week for those interested. Once again, heading towards turn one, the orange paper bar on the right side is my brake marker as I come into here. Let's see how much track limits I abuse as well as we go into the right hand. This is my fast lap I did on the wheel. Through the left we go then, just lifting slightly. Going to accelerate, start the curve there, lift. Let the car roll, let it do its thing. Short shift to fourth gear. When the orange paint battery gets to the center of your screen, that's when you accelerate through the corner. We're not actually struggling with power obviously there, so we nailed that. Bob on. Last three on the right side. Hard on the brakes here. Down towards third gear. We really want to get the car turned in. And want to get on the throttle quite early here. Just to get around the corner as quick as we can. We short shift to fourth gear to avoid power oversteer. On the right side, we've got a pole. Where is it? There it is. Hard on the brakes. Actually a bit harder to see on chase cam. But you can still see it as we go into here. Instantly on the throttle there. Once the car is rotated to continue on through here. Remember, there's... The end of the corner on the right side, the curb there. That is our brake marker. Third gear turn in. We want to get the car straight, so I'm not 100% throttle until it's straight. And then I absolutely fire out the corner. The end of the red and white curbing where the red is. Brake, drop a gear, turn in. Click the curb on the inside. Fourth gear already. Accelerate through the corner. Use a lot of the curb on the exit. Look at that. We use tons of it as we head down towards the hairpin. Then the orange paint bar on the right side. Hard on the brakes and dropping down to second gear. We want the car to slow down. Once we've turned, third gear, accelerate out the corner. Remember, lift off a little bit if you do struggle with power over there, then back full throttle. End of the curve on the left, hard on the brakes, turn in. Wait to see the orange bit of barrier. There it is, there's the sausage. We can start accelerating right now then. Controlling that power over there. Got a crowd on the left hand side, but we want to aim towards the cones and turn in. How close we get to the cones? Very, we stand the red and white curbing. Three we go. Orange bit of barrier on the right hand side. Brake, fourth gear, turn in. Looking to clip the curb. Once we do that, Pit walls start there as well. It's a really beneficial accelerating marker. We head towards the line. That is a 150.2. 49s are possible. You will see 49s, but that was rank one at the time. And I was pleased with that lap, to be honest with you. I wasn't engine braking abusing there at all. And I was just controlling the car. And that's one of the big things here. Short shift the car. So where the gear is, you short shift at that point. Apologies, I forgot to mention that. But that is something you do as well. If you have enjoyed this video, as always, do give it a like and do subscribe to the channel. I appreciate all your support with these videos and that journey to 50k. Do check out GT Amiga. Use my code Tijni at checkout for a discount and I get a kickback. Or the Fanatec link will give me a kickback, which also helps out the channel. 
few videos there to check out, including last week's time trial guide. But once again, a big thank you for watching as always, and I hope to see you in another video or live stream again very soon.